Sergeant Black here and I know you guys have probably seen this target before in some of my other videos and I even did a video explaining how I built it but now we're actually gonna build one from scratch I'm gonna give one to a friend so uh, we're gonna get started here I'm gonna show you step by step how I built this thing okay well the first thing I did was I went out to my Dollar General store and got three of these welcome mats they're 15 and a half by 23 and a half inches uh, as long as you get something close to that, you're good. They're just these rubber welcome mats. They were $3 a piece. You need three of those. You also need a sheet of plywood. I used the cheapest OSB board I could find. It's thin. It's, it's a little less than a half inch thick only. It's low quality, but it's perfect for what we need. If you have better quality, thicker plywood laying around, that's fine too. So you're going to want to cut two identical sides, which are these two I have on the bottom, and then a back and a bottom back and the bottom are a little different. Now with the sides, you're going to want to cut into a rectangle. Before you cut it at an angle like this, you're going to want to cut it into a rectangle. Um, this is originally going to be 21 inches high, so 21 inches up and down, 20 inches this way. So you cut a rectangle 20 inches this way, 21 inches up and down. Then you're going to want to come in from here, mark over 12 inches, and make a mark. Come down to the bottom right corner, go up three and a half inches and make a mark. Then take a straight edge like a piece of wood or a ruler or something and connect it to the two marks and then cut. And that way you have your angle. It's no longer, it used to be a, uh, a rectangle and now you have that slant. Uh, and do that for both pieces. Um, so again, it's 21 inches up, 20 inches this way. Up three and a half inches, make a mark in 12 inches this way, make a mark, and then cut that off. Um, now for the other two pieces here, the back is 25 inches by 19 inches, and the bottom is 24 by 20. These cuts do not have to be perfect. I just used a circular saw and eyeballed it and cut them. I drew a line and just kind of eyeballed it. Um, table saw would work. Jigsaw would work, circular saw is what I use. Any, any way to cut the wood, doesn't matter how you get it cut. Just get the wood cut into these dimensions first. Okay, now we have the bottom piece laid out where we want it to go. It's 24 inches across and then 20 inches deep. Now we want to cut a support base for it. So we got a piece of scrap wood. I have like, oh, it's like a one by three and we're gonna cut pieces to go all the way around the edges and then we're going to screw them to the bottom of that. Alright so we're going to do the 20 inch side first. So I'm going to come down here to my tape measure, uh, find 20 inches, and just draw a mark. Okay now we're over at my miter saw and we're going to cut this on the mark I made at 20 inches. Um, normally you wouldn't have your foot up on the saw but I'm holding the camera with one hand so I have to do it this way. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so I cut a second one at 20 inches. I actually cut them a little bit smaller than 20 inches, and I put them on the sides. Again, this is the front, these are the sides, and this is the bottom piece. So we put them on the sides. You want this board to be flush with the sides. It doesn't matter if it's flush with the front. It can be a little short like that. You definitely don't want it hanging over the front or the back, though. But it can be a little short, but you want it flush with the sides on both sides and you're just simply gonna screw those down. Now, these are like one by threes I used. It doesn't matter what kind of boards you use down here as long as they're all the same thickness. If you had two by fours that were bigger, that's even better. I just happen to have these laying around. If your boards are wider, it's not a big deal. You just need something to screw to the bottom to give it some structural support. Again, two by fours would probably be better. And then you're gonna find some screws and you're gonna screw these down. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your screws are the right length. What you'll do is make sure that the screw will go through this board, okay? And it will go into the plywood underneath. But you don't want it to go through the plywood underneath. So you're gonna have to measure this or hold various sizes of screws up and just make sure it will go through your board and into the plywood, but not all the way through the plywood. So get the right length of screws for this. I'm using one inch, inch and a quarter would work too but one inch or inch and a quarter will work for mine um, with this thin plywood and uh, the one by three. But if you have two by fours or thicker plywood or, or different materials, just make sure, hold the screw up, 
make sure it goes through your first board and into the plywood, but not all the way through and out the other side. And then just screw this down. Okay, so I got both pieces screwed down, and I just put one, two, three, four, five screws on each side. Um, if you don't have a power drill like this, you could use nails and a hammer and just hammer five, six nails in or so. Um, don't screw too close to the edge, though. You might split the piece of wood like I did. Um, so you probably want to keep the screws at least a couple inches from the edges. Just right down the middle, I put five screws. Uh, now you need to do the same thing for here and across the back. So you just get a piece of uh, scrap wood, uh, set it in there, and it comes to about here. Let's cut it a little short so we have room. Just draw a line and take that down and chop it off and, and get a second one for the back as well. And then do the same thing, screw those in. Okay, so now I have all four of the base pieces put on the bottom, and then we'll flip it over. And now that is your bottom. As you can see, the base is underneath it on all four sides, and that's, that's going to be the bottom. Now we're going to put our side pieces on next. And what I've done, I've just stood one of these up here. And you're going to want to come over to the side of it and check and make sure it's not too long. So the front of this, we have it lined up flush, flush with the front of our target. But when we do that, it's not flush with the back. See, it hangs over a little bit. It's a little longer. So there's two things you could do. One, we're just going to mark this and just cut this little tiny piece off the back so it's flush with the back as well. Or you could just leave it alone. If you're going to do that, make sure it's flush with the front and leave a little bit overhang on the back. It's not going to significantly harm your project if it overhangs a little bit on the back um, and no one's going to see it. But I'd recommend if it overhangs a decent amount like I have here just just cut that sliver off so I'm gonna go do that before I reattach this okay so I trimmed this down it's now flush with the front and it's perfectly flush with the back and we're gonna use I'd say a good five screws maybe even seven and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in the bottom in the outside we're gonna screw them one two three four five six seven we're gonna screw them in to that base that wood base underneath the bottom piece. So we gotta get pretty low to the bottom, very close to the bottom, and we're just gonna screw them in, and they're gonna end up going into this piece underneath the plywood, this base we put. That's why I said it might be better if you use a two by four because then it would be thicker and you'd have more room, but this is all, I don't even have any uh, scrap two by fours laying around, but we're gonna drill screws through here. I would get slightly longer screws this time because you can go in deeper, you're not worried about coming out the other side. So I'm going to use inch and a half screws here instead of just the, the one inch that I used earlier. And I'm going to put seven screws in here. Once you get the first screw, and that's the hardest part, um, if you have something you can lean it over like a table so you can screw down into the side, this is the bottom of it hanging over the table, that's a lot easier than trying to get down by the floor and uh, screw it in. So I only ended up using five screws into the bottom, and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other side then. Okay, now this is what you should have at this point. A bottom and two sides. This is the front, and this is the back where it slopes back. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the back piece. All right, now before you go attaching the back, you're going to want to ask yourself how you're going to attach it. If you have a nail gun, I simply am just, which I do, I'm simply gonna just gonna nail it. I'm gonna nail it right on the edge of this and directly into this plywood. If you have a nail gun, which I do, I have an air nailer. So I'm gonna do that and we use inch and a half uh, nails. If you don't have a nail gun, what I would recommend is on the back of the inside of here, take a piece of wood 
and put it flush going down and screw it in. Just like the base we built for the bottom, we're gonna build a base along the back here where it slants. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna screw that to the plywood and that way it gives it a wider area for you to then screw the back to this piece. So you'll screw this piece to the plywood, you'll screw the plywood back to the side of this piece, just like we did on the bottom. So you're gonna use you know, a piece of scrap wood on each side, cut it to length, or you're just gonna simply nail it to the back, which is what I'm gonna do. Okay, before we actually put the back piece on, we're gonna to wanna to put this plate on the back. This is a one by four, so it's about three and a half inches uh, tall. I cut this down to 25 inches, which is the width of the back. So we're gonna come around here to the back side, we're going to set this down here, like that, and I'm just going to nail it in. I'm going to take my air nailer and I'm just going to pop a couple nails in here and here, and here and here, and I'm probably going to pop a couple into the bottom as well, and just attach this to the back so when we're putting the back piece on, it's going to have something uh, to sit on then. Now I've actually flipped this thing on its side. Um, down against the floor is actually the front. This is the very back. And I'm gonna put this piece on. It's gonna make it easier to nail this on when it's sitting up and down. So I'm just gonna take my nail gun here and shoot a couple nails into this and, and attach it. Now you're gonna take this back piece and attach it. What we'll do here is we're gonna set this. We're gonna set it up against here like that. Okay, this is what would be the bottom. And it fits nicely, but at the bottom, as you can see, it doesn't quite fit. You're going to have to squeeze those side pieces in. They have a tendency to bow outward before you nail them. So I would nail a couple at the top. As you're going down the side, you're going to want to take these pieces and squeeze them in tight and so you can nail it down. So I'm going to attach this with a nail gun now, and then we'll have the back on. So what I did to get started here is I put one nail in the bottom corner. Then I line this up, squeeze it in, and nail the top corner. Now the other side, you see, I have a large gap. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna squeeze it in, put one nail in the bottom corner, then I'm gonna squeeze this in tight, and put another nail on the top, and then I can go up and down both rows with a bunch of nails to totally fasten it. Okay, this is the back side of it, and it's all attached now, and I just went up and down here, just put a nail about every two and a half, three inches. So I put a bunch of nails, down each side and I'm going to turn it up right side up now and this is what it should now look like. You have the complete box, you have the bottom, the sides on and the back slants down. This is what it looks like around the back. As you can see it, it slants back. So this is pretty much built. We just got to add the finishing touches like a shelf in the front, a thing to hang it, uh, the rubber mats and all that. So we're going to get started on that next here. Again, if you don't have a nail gun, how you would attach this is you would put a piece of wood down here, you would attach it to this side piece, and then you could screw the back from the outside, you could screw it to that piece of wood you put. So that's how you would do it if you didn't have a nail gun. Now we're gonna put a piece across the face of this. This is also a one by four, so it's three and a half inches tall. I cut it 25 inches long, so it exactly fits across the front. And we're just going to set this on the bottom across the front. I'm going to put five screws into the bottom, two inch screws, just like we did when we were attaching the side pieces. I'm also probably going to pop a couple nails on the edges too. So I'm going to attach this uh, bottom plate to give it more of a finished look and it'll also let us mount a shelf then. So I'm going to attach that now to the bottom here. Next we're going to put a shelf on the front to set soda cans and everything on. So also got a one by four, again three and a half inches. Cut this one a little shorter, it's 24 inches instead of 25, so it will fit inside here. And we're just gonna set it on here like this, and we're just gonna nail it down to here with the nail gun. So we got our shelf on here, I just put about four or five nails down the middle. That's attached pretty good, so we can set like soda cans and stuff on that. Now we're gonna wanna put one of those black welcome mats across the back here. So what we'll do is we'll just take this, Flip it back onto its back. Then we're going to come in here and take a black welcome mat. And we're going to just try to evenly 
spread it out. There we go. We see it's not quite at the bottom, but you're not going to be hitting the bottom anyways um, because of the front face. It'll be stopping from shooting down there. It's not quite the top either, so it's not a perfect fit, but let's just center it in there generally. And um, we're going to glue it down and we're going to staple it also. So we're going to take it off and we're going to put glue all over this back side and then we're going to put the mat back on and uh, staple it. I got my glue gun here. That should be good enough. Okay, I've set the mat down. I wiggled it around a little bit to spread the glue around. And now we're going to staple it all over the place, basically, just to make sure it, it holds. Now, the glue alone might not hold it, so put a staple there. And I'm just going to go through and put a whole, whole bunch of staples with this staple gun into the thing. Okay, the mat is now glued and stapled to the back. And next, we need to put a 1x2 along the inside of here on both sides. So I've cut this down to 12 inches. And we're going to put it in here flush with the top like that. And we're going to come to this side and we're going to put another one on here too, flush with the top. I'm going to use the 1 inch screws and screw these in. Okay, so I have screwed these two side pieces on. I used three screws. They're flush with the front, flush with the top. And we have another one on the side. Now we're gonna go back and get another one by two, same size as the one we just screwed on. But we're gonna cut them to two inches in length. And we're gonna set them on the top front corner like that. See, they're only two inches long. They're flush with the front and the side. We're gonna set these on the top corners in the front and we're going to nail these down. I'm going to use the nail gun to nail these down. Okay, now that we got those two pieces nailed on, we're going to get another one by two. This time we're going to cut it 25 inches long and we're just going to set it on there right behind those two pieces we just cut. Now we're not going to nail this in or anything. We're just going to set it there standing up like that. Then we're going to take some more 1x2s. These are going to be 6.5 inches. And we're going to set them behind there. And we're going to press them up against there. Not super tight, but uh, you know we're just going to press them against there. And these ones we're going to nail on. And what we're doing here is we're, we're going to be able to pull this out then between the grooves. So we're going to set that in there and we're going to nail these six inch pieces on just like we did these two uh, two inch pieces in the front. All right, now we've nailed these two uh, six inch pieces in or six and a half inch pieces in behind that bar. And now we're going to get another 25 inch piece and we're just going to set it there across. Now we're not going to stand it up like the front one. We're just going to lay it all the way across. And we'll get two small pieces to cover whatever's left. These are about an inch and a half. But whatever you have left back here at the end, you're going to want to cover it. Cover that last end with this square. Now, same thing here. This bar is going to be able to be lifted out. And we're just going to nail these last two blocks in. Don't get it super tight because you want to be able to pull that, that bar out. So maybe just you know put it in super tight and then pull it back a tiny bit. And we're just going to nail these two, these two pieces in. As you can see, now that we have this, these nailed in, this can be just lifted out completely and put back in. And this front one that stands up, we can do the same thing. We can just lift this out and put it back in. And these pieces are nailed down. So next we're going to take one of these rubber mats and we're going to drape it across this back bar. We're going to fold it around the back. And squeeze it tight. We just want to make sure that it's just barely touching the bottom so it can swing a little bit if it has to, but we don't want much of a gap. And we're just going to simply staple it flat against this bar. Okay, so we have this mat stapled in, and now we need to take another mat to cover the other side. 
When we do the exact same thing, we're just going to drape it over. And they will overlap. So there will be a bunch of overlap in the middle, that's fine. And we're just going to, and we're going to do the same thing, just staple this right down. Well, at this point, your target is uh, basically done. Um, what I like to do, though, is it's an additional optional feature, is add a wire across here. So you could hang another row of targets or you could hang soda cans on that. So what you'll do is you'll come down to the side here and you'll drill a hole. I go about four and a half inches down and in line with this piece. So I measure down four and a half inches and put a hole here and do the same thing over on the other side. And then we can feed a wire like a, a clothes hanger through there and then we can hang targets from that. And you'll take an old coat hanger like this and you'll just clip the top of it off. And then just unfold it and straighten it out. So then you'll take your hanger and feed it through that hole and get it into the middle here and then you're going to attach a couple of clothes pins before you feed it through the other the hole on the other side there. And what you do then is you uh, put a couple of clothespins on here. There's a little spring in the middle of the clothespin that has a hole in it. You, you put those through the wire so you can move it back and forth. And you just push it through the hole on the other side there. And now you have clothespins hanging. I'll take the wires on the sides and bend them down so that the thing doesn't just fall out. And the last thing I did was I put a couple of clips on the top. Uh, clothespins have a hard time fitting over this wooden bar, so I got a couple of these little plastic clamps. You can get them at like a dollar store or any like home improvement store. And uh, there's the finished product. As you see, I bent the edges down of the hanger so it doesn't fall out. Um, we can clip targets or soda cans here. We can clip targets, larger targets, to the top row. And we can set soda cans or something on the bottom shelf and shoot at it. And here's a look at it with a couple of targets on it. If you had a large target, you can clip it to the top one that's going to come all the way down. This is just a small one I have here. But smaller targets, you can clip to that uh, hanger on the middle. You can put soda cans on the bottom, and there's enough height where you can clip another one to the middle. So you could run a, a row of soda cans across the middle on clothespins and a row across the bottom, really give you something to shoot at. And um, I'll show you how this works. Um, what will happen here is after you shoot through these targets or cans, the BBs are going to come in here and they're going to hit these black welcome mats on the back that we put. And some of them are going to just bounce off and fly back and then they're going to land in here. They're not going to ricochet back out. The ones that break through it will hit the, the slanted back and fall down and just kind of stay behind there. And this is why we have this thing removable. If you want to clean it out someday, you'll just lift this out and then you can get back in there and pick up all the BBs that were left there. And this really is, is nice because you don't gotta worry about these BBs flying backwards all over your basement. Um, they, most of them stay in there, you know, a couple times they'll bounce out, but most of them will stay inside the box. You can collect them and reuse them. And um, you can set up a bunch of soda cans and shoot those, that's a lot of fun. And this top piece is removable because if you're not using clips, some people might just wanna staple their targets along the top row. Well, eventually it's gonna get full of staples just take it out, flip it around, you can use the back side and staple and then eventually you can just get a new piece of wood this length and stick it in there. So that's why these parts are removable. Um, if you like this video, uh, just give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you build your own, you know, let me know in the comments how it worked out. Um, this isn't the only way to build one of these. I'm sure there's other ways. You might be able to build a bigger or a better or sturdier one, but this is cheap and easy to use and it works great for a basement. I put mine up on a couple of saw horses. You can put it on a table, whatever you want to do. But saw horses are a nice height uh, to shoot at if you get some cheap ones. I got the $10 ones from Harbor Freight. And um, all in all, I'd say it's a, it's a pretty good size. It's it's a good target. And like again, if you like the video, just, just give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments uh, if you build a better one and any improvements you think you can make to it. All right, well, thank you guys.